You know, it's been a long time since I made one of these videos. I actually established my channel talking about them quite a bit. You know, the videos where I talk about how to make a certain type of character, how to roleplay them, how to create them, and I stopped making them because a lot of the other channels on YouTube already did this. There's so many channels on how to create builds and specific abilities and how to play a certain class, and I just didn't want to do that because, frankly, I didn't think it added much value. So many people have already covered it in such better detail than I ever could, then why would I want to talk about it? But I've had a lot of people on my channel recently requesting me to go back to this sort of format. Not just, you know, only do my old stuff, but to talk again about how to create specific types of characters. And I realized why. It's because a lot of the times it's hard to look past the classes. It's hard to look past the base mechanics to see the character behind that. And frankly, I have the opposite problem. I oftentimes see the character before the mechanics and I miss out on the mechanics. And thus I actually make a whole ton of mistakes in my games. Sorry to my players every time that's happened. But regardless, it is something that I think is fun and I do like talking about. And hopefully you guys like these videos. So I'm gonna make a few, test them out, throw them out there, see if you guys like it. If you do like them, please subscribe, like, comment, you know, all the usual YouTube stuff, because it does a whole ton to be able to tell me what videos you guys like so I can continue churning out that content for you. Because ultimately, this is an education channel. I just want to teach you guys what you want to know. So with that being said, I want to talk about witches. So let's talk about that. As a part of Player Role's continuing goal to connect with and grow the tabletop community, we'd like to introduce Eldritch Foundry. They're an absolutely incredible tool for customized miniatures, and if you want to make monsters, characters, or even just that perfect NPC, Eldritch Foundry can do wonders to help you achieve that. Right now, we're actually partnered with them to give you guys 15% off your order so long as you use the coupon code PLAYERROLE. If you've been waiting to get that perfect miniature, now's your chance, especially if you want to use it for a villain, because I think that's the most fun you could do. Anyways, enjoy the video! All right, so what is it that I mean about witches? Like, why, what do I mean when I say I want to talk about witches? Well, there's a very specific vibe when it comes to witches. The first thing that comes to mind when I say that is probably, you know, your typical cartoon depiction of a witch. The pointy hat, the broom, the cauldron, the black cat. Which, you know, is fun, and I do like seeing that in D&D, but let's be honest, the hag has that covered. If you want to play that character, let me go ahead and just line that out for you right now. You can play yourself a warlock, or you can play yourself a wizard, you go ahead and just choose the Hexblood lineage, boom, you got that settled. Just flavor everything you do exactly as D&D has already lined it out for you. If you want to cast a spell, look at the components, use them in the spell as you would as a witch. Easy. There's even a ton of spells recently with Tasha's that can kind of help with that. But that's not exactly what I want to talk about. Because there's more when it comes to witches. There's more excitement behind that. See, when I say witch, I think of, and I'm sure a lot of you do too, the old Salem witch trials. My mama, your mama, witches never cry. My mama, your mama, witches gonna die. Which, yes, did go with the whole pointy hat and stuff, but there's more of that. It was much less the appearance of what a witch looked like and what it is that they did. They manipulated the natural world through loopholes in reality, essentially. Some call the dark arts or practical magic. They spoke with demons, they spoke with horrible creatures from beyond in order to learn how to manipulate reality in the same way they do. It does give off strong warlock vibes, don't get me wrong, but I think there is more to it that I would really like to talk about. Because the idea of a witch-like character is really fun and underutilized, I think, in D&D. Yes, there's the bombastic and flamboyant wizard who can draw runes in the air, and there's the incredibly powerful sorcerer who has fire flowing through his veins, but then there's the witch, the one who will subtly cast a hex on you, who manipulate reality itself or chance in order to be able to harm you, to be able to heal somebody through a strange concoction nobody would have thought of. I become a hero. I do it, I become the enemy. That doesn't seem fair. I just think that's really fun. And then, you know, there's a whole train going around on TikTok and the internet beyond of witchy girl vibes. And frankly, I think that's a kind of cute aesthetic. So sure, we'll roll with it. So how do you play this type of character? Well, there's some obvious classes in front of you. Warlock and Wizard. I already mentioned those. Sorcerer works great too. And frankly, Cleric would work or Bard would work or, huh, strange, talking about a witchy type and all of the spellcasting classes work. But yes, essentially, any of the spellcasting classes will work for this. That's not really what you're looking for. Specifically, when it comes to playing this type of character, I think the best way to do it is to find every single spell that can affect someone outside of a damaging type. 
What I mean by that is Hex is great. It deals damage to them, an extra D6, but it also affects one of their ability scores. And that specific portion of it gets so underutilized because people only use it in combat, which I get it, I get what you do. An extra D6 is huge, especially at earlier levels. But they only use it in combat, and frankly, ability checks don't come up that much in combat. But if you use it outside of combat, say your barbarian is having a giant arm wrestling contest and you hex his enemy to have a disadvantage on strength checks. Why would you not do that? That's great. That's awesome. And it really creates that amazing vibe. Or say that you are in a intense social encounter and you want to be able to cause somebody to stutter over their words. All you have to do, hex them, disadvantage on charisma checks. It's an amazing spell and there's more you can do with it. Bane, beautiful. That works amazingly. Enhance ability, creating a charm out of woodland items to be able to give to somebody to grant them extra luck and that's your enhance ability. Perfect. You could take the guidance cantrip and it works the exact same way. And as you get higher and higher and higher in levels, you can do more and more with this. You can create amazing spells like glibness. You literally create a concoction to be able to hand to somebody and say this will give you a silver tongue. And there's also a bunch of races that work with this. Like I mentioned earlier, Hexblood is pretty much your quintessential witchy type. But you could also do a Dampier, or well, honestly, any of the lineages. Or you can go something a little bit more traditional. I would love to see an elf who was actually a witch. An elf who was ostracized from society and was not allowed to learn magic like the rest of them. But a high elves still have innate magical abilities. And so rather than learning in their high prestigious schools, they were sent to the woods and they learned to cast magic by themselves. Yes, those elves were learning powerful battle magics, but you were learning the magic of fate and the ability to manipulate it by simply interacting with nature itself. Which then goes really well with the druid. But one of the things you can also do is you don't necessarily have to lean into just the spellcasting. For example, one of my favorite types of playing witches is playing a ranger. You might not expect that, but a ranger can go really well into playing for it because not only are they a little bit more nature based they also have a lot of abilities which really play into the witch like five you can use their spells for witchy stuff but imagine when you use your primeval awareness which i know is not a popular ability but flavoring that as tossing bones or reading the area around you in a magical sense like a witch can really be a lot of fun. And I think that really fills that vibe very well, especially if you wanna play something like a Beastmaster. I know, not the greatest subclass in the world, I, I understand. But if you wanted to have a large black cat, please don't copy Dritz, but you know what I'm saying. If you wanna have a familiar like that, it works really well. I think Ranger could do an amazing job and their ability to be able to track also just really feels in line with that witch-like vibe who's in tune with nature and learned that natural magic. Don't forget, most of the legends of witches came just from people who had already learned about the land and were really experienced in that. And so I would lean into it fully. Druid, again, is a great option as well but just figure out how to do that and how to make it work and create that vibe and it really works out pretty well. This was for a prince. Easy on the eyes, tight pants. He demanded I give him the strength of 10 men and he gave me this for a spell. A spell that would change his fate. But there's so many ways you can go with the witchy type. It really comes with how you cast your spells rather than what it is you're choosing. And the higher levels you go, just choose the ones that well, really affect things in a unique way. Things like True Sight or Perfect or even the ninth level spell, uh, what's it called? Um, it's the one that lets you see the, f I promise, I play D&D a lot. I, I talk about it for a living, whatever. The point is, you could choose some amazing, amazing spells that'll really go well with that witch-like vibe. And then you just kind of lean into the creepiness of it. I think right now, Laudna from Critical Role is nailing the witchy vibes. And she did choose to go the warlock route, which is perfect. But I think you can do it with pretty much anything and it really works super, super well. And I think could be a really, really fun character at your table. But most of all, go out into the world and make it your own. And don't forget to have a great day and never forget to play your role. A huge shout out to all those divine bastards over on our Patreon that helped make this video happen. I'd also like to take an additional very personal thank you to BKBW, Diet Blue, Duplicolor, Malkadil, I hope I pronounced that right, Sassy Cat Productions, Sorit, Supreme Court, Tinai, and Void Mystic. We wouldn't be able to do what we do without our patrons and we are very thankful for your continued support. You guys are the absolute best and I will never take your support for granted.